On this episode, we talk about Snapchat updates and Facebook likes. Actually, dislikes. Gary Vay, Nur, Chuck, and this is episode 139 of the Ask Gary V Show. I don't even, you know, I was gonna say I'm focused, but I always say I'm focused. <laughs> Let's just default into that I'm always focused, Vayner Nation. Good to see you. Sorry I didn't bang out my wine show yesterday. Clearly, by my tweet, I thought I was going to. Sometimes, especially when I'm at Wine Library, I don't really have control. There's no DeMeo to run around to keep me on time. I appreciated your hey text. We tried. Which had no shot. Uh, good to see everybody. I guess that means you three physically, but all of you behind this lens. Uh, Statement of the day, real curious. Oh, actually, I was gonna, yeah. Uh, No, that doesn't make any sense. I was gonna say, are you watching this on YouTube or Facebook? I assume that they would then just reply by saying, I'm watching it. Actually, here's a good one. Just leave a comment in one or the other places. Just trying to do a little data search on how people are engaging across those two platforms. I'm enjoying the split uh, life on both platforms. Uh, Stunlin. Let's get into the show. <laughs> yeah. I still have a few more episodes before I need you. Yeah, you need to get the cadence down. Uh, yeah. Andrew asks, what do you think of Snapchat's move to charge for replays? It's a great question. I'm sure it's on everybody's mind. I'm sure, you know, Stefan, real quick, I think we should settle this out into its own video. Uh, this is a very intriguing thing, this charging for the replays on Snapchat. To me, this feels tactical. Uh, What I mean by that is I do not believe that the powers at Snapchat, I have no knowledge of this, uh, think this is a big time revenue source for them. I think what Snapchat is, I'm so impressed with Snapchat that they know they need to stay fresh, right? We've also got, are you gonna ask a question later about the the new selfie thing? No, okay, cool. So I'll use that in my answer. I think technology companies need to have updates, need to stay fresh. And I think Facebook did, did that extremely well. And honestly, over the last half decade, you know, especially the last three or four years, I think Twitter did that poorly. I think Instagram showing that capability, different filters, different size, even if it's not a big deal. And Snapchat has shown me that ability with Snap Cash, if you remember. That's not the biggest thing in the world. I think it's a quick little play. Clearly, look, they're trying to position towards uh, an IPO. And so here's what I think the strategy is. One, we make the users of Snapchat feel like there's still things going on, right? The new selfie filter thing, which is wild. I mean, we might as well just do it here. I know you've got rainbows coming out of your mouth, I get it. Um, But you know, I think that's part of it. And look, and I think what's really smart about the replay, what is it, three for 99 cents kind of thing? What I think is super smart about that is, I don't think they expect, I, I I don't buy anybody at Snapchat thinking this is gonna crush, right? Here's a good example, watch this. Stefan, you gonna do any of it? I don't know. DRock? Maybe not. Hey, no, no, don't, no, don't no, say what I'm no, leading to, I wanna know. No, 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 do you no, think no. you're going? I'm gonna do it once. That makes I sense. Want, I wanna have them stand that's by a, for Yeah, that's, that's And would emergencies be that uh, a lot of female Vayner Nation people uh, find you more attractive with your new facial hair and may send you the kind of snap that gets you to want to maybe replay it? That's exactly what it is. <laughs> that's what I think. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I, I think that's the cliche joke that people are gonna make about the replay, what I just did, that was on purpose. I think, I think there'll be a small subset that will do it one time, which wouldn't be hard. I mean, listen, if, if everybody on Snapchat does it one time, you got 150 million people spending a buck, it's 150 million dollars. I mean, it could add up really quick. I don't expect that to be the case, but to the point, God forbid. That's the kind of play my, I always say, God forbid it does work. God forbid everybody does want to do it, 99 cents feels right to everybody, and all of a sudden, it becomes a massive revenue stream. There was no loss. I'm a big fan of doing things that have no downside. Now, if you do a ton of features, and notice how both came out. An amazing selfie feature that I think everybody's gonna love, 
along with this kind of paid kind of thing, I think it was brilliant from afar, a really well executed update, one of my favorite updates of the year by any platform. And so uh, what do I think about it? I don't think it's a revenue stream that is meaningful for Snapchat. I think when you take it to a higher level and think about the strategy of an update for one of the leading consumer apps in the world, I think it's downright phenomenal. I also think that was a downright phenomenal answer and just allowed a lot of people to see that I think at a different plane, which is why they are allocating their precious time to watch the show and I appreciate that and I will continue to try to think with my God-given abilities and bring value to you because I do think that's the smart conversation that people are not happening. As a matter of fact, on that's done when I want you to work with Andy Kay and Sid the intern who's in school. Sid, good to see you, brother. Uh, on an article co- version of this because I think it could pop. I think you'll be seeing this article pop later today. Great. Next question from Caleb. What's up, Gary? This is Caleb again. This time I'm not driving. However, I do have a question for you. I am developing an app with a partner. Basically, the first time we built it, we had an initial name and branding. However, we discovered that there was a potential competitor with a similar name, so we decided to go with another brand opportunity that we had. However, now there's another app with the same name and a similar premise. My overall belief is that we have the superior product and a way better strategy. My question, though, is do we continue to have the same name as a potential competitor, or do we completely rebrand ourselves again to find a new name? What is your insights on this? Thank you so much, Gary. You're awesome. That was amazing. (laughs) I love it. Oh, man, that was amazing. Uh, I don't think it matters. Next question. <laughs> Fine, I'll go into a little bit. I, I, you know, look, I, I don't think it's convenient to, uh, to have a similar name with a similar premise to a competitor. I think, it'd be, you know, if Twitter came out when Twatter came out, it would have been awkward, especially if there was a company named Twatter. Um, but I think, I think that, uh, I think at the end of the day, my point of view on this would be, I'd be sitting there and say, you know what? I'm just gonna out execute the other person and force them to change the name because they realized they didn't want to compete with us because we were the thing that was winning. Though I don't love the situation. I don't, I, I don't want to also say, look how cool I am. I'm going to beat them to it. Like, and I don't mind you walking away from it and changing a name either. I just ultimately don't think it's going to matter. Um, you're going to have to out-execute. Uh, Angry Birds had a similar situation. There was a lot of birdie kind of stuff going on. When it, like, if you're the best and your product's the best and you, you can navigate it, you've got the right product and you guys are the right leaders, I don't think it ends up playing out. And so I wouldn't stress about it too much. I think a lot of times, and now to make it more valuable as a question to everybody overall, I think a lot of times people very much worry about names. I have consistently stayed on a plane of the name doesn't matter. You can make a name matter after the fact. I don't think Snapchat or Facebook or Google meant anything to anybody until they actually meant something. Uh, you know, I guess maybe I'm affected by having a last name like Vaynerchuk. You know, it doesn't feel like the most brandable name. I also made an incredibly huge flaw in my Twitter handle with Gary V. I mean, I have two silent E's at the name of my username, which is not easy to explain in public. It takes time every time, times the asset. Uh, you know, people are like, where's the E? You know, it just, it just wasn't a smart move. Another bad name play by me that I think I overcame in a Twitter environment. So, um, Execution will always trump your name. Stefan asks. Stefan? Stefan, Stefan, Stefan. All right. Asks. Stefan asks, what do you think is the strongest differentiator between good content, aesthetics or copy? Uh, both. You know, the, the variable of success is creative, but I think, uh, I think the, the copy, the words that you support, uh, you know, I see it a lot on Instagram. I've tested the same picture with different words, t- posting at the same time of day, just for my own education, and, uh, and the truth is that's not a controlled environment, so it's not, it's not science, but it's, it's anecdotal, it's fun to see. I mean, clearly the word, you know, some people are gonna re- react it. And the reason I brought up Instagram to everybody is we all know that Instagram is massively visual, but people still read the copy. I mean, this is a crazy, I, I saw somebody at a conference giving advice that you shouldn't write long form copy on Instagram. And I was laughing because it's just such a simplistic answer. I actually think long form copy is one of the big arbitrage opportunities on Instagram. Um, and so, uh, I think they equally matter. I think you'll get results predicated on where your strengths lie. I'm not very good at the picture stuff. I'm not really even good at the copy stuff. I'm really good at the video stuff. Uh, so um, that's it. You know, that's, uh, that to me is, the answer is both. And, it's, and it will always be both. And it, and it happens so much. Just do it. 
What was, you know, was that the, the, the three words or was it the awesome imagery that came along with the initial kind of campaign? Was it Bo Jackson like this? Or was it, or was it the slogan? I mean, there's always that. I mean, would Priceless from MasterCard pop if the first video wasn't emotionally grippling and, and got you? Um, so uh, the answer is both. You need both to be, you know, to really have that massive upside. And one can drag down the other. I just realized I did this. This was good. It was good, right? And this is in black and white. I wonder if it's better in black and white. Let's go. Amazing. So, Gary, everybody's really excited that you're speaking at the TAP conference alongside a United States Senator, Mark Warner. Uh, you've been a prolific <laughs> investor in some of the coolest companies in mobile and Uber, uh, Twitter, Resi, and, uh, in my humble opinion, Button. Um, tell everybody a little bit about why you're speaking at TAP and, uh, and what you hope to get out of it. So this is an interesting question. Really nice right hook by one of my investments. Uh, Jaconi, nice job. Uh, uh, I'm speaking at TAP because uh, I feel obligated to you uh, because I invested in your company. And what I'm hoping to get out of it is uh, the realization from other people that are involved with me in business that I'm a supporter of the things that I back. It's actually very black and white. There's no PR answer to this question. Um, it's it's a... Uh, when you invest in somebody else's company, it's not just the money that you're deploying, um, it's the energy, it's the thought leadership. Uh, there's an arbitrage in having me there. I'm gonna give the best talk at the conference. Uh, people are gonna think your conference was good. They're gonna think your product is better. They're gonna see that I'm invested into your company in a world where I have hundreds of investments. Um, and you're, uh, in two years, I'm gonna be competing for a deal and that person's gonna say, ah, why, you know, I don't know, Gary, maybe you, maybe this other person, why you? I'm gonna say, well, you know what, hit up the button CEO and ask him what kind of investor I am. It's not just the money, it's smart money, it's not just the money, it's money that sweats. So that's what I'm trying to get out of it. Delivering on my promise, um, deploying effort, and most of all, uh, continuing to paint a narrative of what kind of individual I am uh, as an investor, as a businessman, and as a dude. Money that sweats. Is that, is that an existing term or did you just make that up on the spot? The funny part about that is I'm not sure and honestly I took note of that too and I was going to talk to you after but I, we might as well just do it here. Because smart money's got a lot of momentum yeah. Yeah. but can you actually Google it up? Money that sweats is kind of interesting. <laughs> you know I think people throw everything into mo- smart money but there's a big difference between smart money and money that sweats. Yeah, sweat equity. But like sweat equity is totally different. Yeah. Cool. All right. yeah we might have something there. there we go. Derek asks, what are your thoughts on Facebook's upcoming dislike button? The dislike button, this might have to be an article as well. I don't know a lot about it. And, uh, and I think in, you know, Ben uh, Leventhal, the CEO of Resi, forementioned in the prior uh, video, and I had dinner last night strategizing around Resi. Download it if you're in LA, New York, Miami, uh, Washington, DC, R-E-S-Y. You know what, Stefan? Um, uh, put a glove on me there when I did the right hook. Uh, what? Uh, oh, my man. Uh, this wonderful man is going to be shadowing me today. Hey, brother. Good to see you. I'm live, by the way. Oh. You can just sit. I'm finishing up the show. Uh, so the dislike button introduces some interesting stuff. Ben, Ben's point was when negativity comes into the ecosystem, it can really crash and burn a, a platform. He was talking about how Twitter got more negative after the kumbaya moments of 2007, 8, 9, and there's a lot of truth to that. Um, to me, the dislike button allows Facebook to make its algorithm even stronger, but that, would, that was kind of how I first thought about it, as if it was a hide, it would know, but it seems to me, and, and this is where I think Facebook may have a problem, it seems to me that they want to, in the quotes that I read last, late last night, it was two o'clock in the morning when I wanted to read it real fast, so I haven't invested in a very smart answer yet on this, Steve or Derek, thank you for asking the question. It seems that they want to allow people to express other emotions. To me, where I think they're going with this, uh, quality-wise, is, we see a lot of people post, uh, for example, we see uh, my friend uh, Drew, uh, is an incredible friend, uh, and uh, uh, his father passed away. And he wrote an incredible piece, and 
it was a, a beautiful picture of his dad and a wonderful piece about how hardcore of a Philly sports fan he was, which kind of struck me. I kind of already you know, thought about like my own demise and how my kids were gonna talk about my Jets fandom of like how he was a fan and then he bought the team. What an amazing man he was. Uh, but that's not what makes him amazing. He was the best dad. I'm giving you guys some material, Xander. Uh, so I think that, um, I think that what Facebook is trying to figure out a cadence around is you look and a lot of people are hitting like. And there's all these life events that maybe you, don't, you wouldn't in real life, in real communication say, I like that. You, there's other things. Now, I don't know if you're gonna say dislike to that, but I think what Facebook is starting to show with this move and uh, clearly has enormous upside in its continuation of evolution, very similar to my first answer on the Snapchat question is, I could see an environment where multiple buttons exist. We have a much stronger way to express our actual thoughts on the content we're seeing in front of us and that intelligence becomes the backbone of making a much better product for Facebook itself. Anybody who's into data science or understands how these things work and even if you just deploy common sense, you recognize that the like is too broad for Facebook to do enough with that data to make the product better. And so if they had more options to create more context, they'd be able to create a far better curated experience. So I think that's what they're up to. It's intriguing to me that it's a dislike button. You know, if my thesis was right, my intuition is that they would go with a different kind of button. And that's why I'm not so sold that I'm right with my point of view there. But those are the curiosities that are running through my head. So what do I, to answer it black and white, what I think about, uh, actually turn me into black and white here even though it's part of the official show because I think that's funny to answer it black and white. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, actually, no, go back to color because the show's always full time in color. But in that one little weird period, make it black and white. Uh, I think it's a very clever and very important step. One that I do believe has major impact and one that this market will look back at five years from now and recognize it was a massive moment in Facebook's you know, lineage, including it became a chip away at becoming more negative and not going in the right direction or started creating the framework for even smarter, better uh, experiences for all of us on their platform. And don't forget that platform deploys to Instagram. So a lot of you are saying, yeah, but I'm not there anymore. Oh, yes, you are. It's called Instagram. You live there. And so uh, I think it's important. I'm excited to see what happens with it. That's it. Good show. Felt tight. Felt good about it. Uh, no sta- you know, statements a day. Leave your, leave your thoughts. Would love to get, you know, one of the big things why, why I shifted from question a day to statement a day is I want more feedback. I want you, Vayner Nation, to critique the shows because with that feedback, I will continue to make it better for you. That is the plan. Have a wonderful day. Uh, we're not taping Friday because I'm heading out to a, a wedding. Uh, we're, are, we, are we filming tomorrow? Tomorrow's Thursday? Tomorrow's Wednesday? Yeah. Uh, tomorrow yes, we do have a show tomorrow. It's tomorrow, Thursday? Yeah. Yep, so we got a show tomorrow. So tomorrow will be my official Jets Colts Prediction, I've got a good one. I've got a good one. You keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them.